Hello from Farland. Well, I want to report that uh, our uh, framing, framing past inspection, our mechanical, which is the uh, HVAC, the, the heating and air conditioning, past inspection, electrical, past inspection yesterday, that was a little tougher for some reason. We had to have it inspected twice. But uh, we got that. Next is insulation, which uh, when that's done, and fire blogging, that, that will have to be in, inspected. And when that is inspected and approved, we could go ahead and uh, cover it up with the drywall slash plaster. So we're getting close, gang. We're getting close. So this morning, um, I thought I would uh, see if I could understand the geometry of these curves. Oh, let, let me show you what the plan looks like now. I think this is pretty close to the last iteration. Three separate tracks. Main station over on this side. House Street used to be over here. The main station, whether I call it Shell Hill or House Street, is over there. The other one will be a halt somewhere on the way out. The farm is going over here. And this will decline from this point down to about here, where it would be low enough to get under the table. And it will run around at that elevation, just barely under the table, and exposed over to around here. And there'll be a tunnel mouth here, but you'll be able to see behind it, and a tunnel mouth over here. So it'll run underneath the farm, essentially, and reappear over here. And this will be Farland, with either a spur and some sort of halt, or I might even put it on the main line. Put the station right on the main line. So this declines here. It's level all the way around through here. And then right here, it starts to climb. And it climbs up until it reaches elevation back here. And then uh, comes around and into the station. So that is the current plan. It's changed a hundred times. But this, I think, is the best. That pole it has caused all kinds of problems. I have it drawn at almost a foot in diameter because, of course, I don't know for sure exactly where it is in relationship to the track. I don't have a program that can coordinate the track exactly to the building. So, given that, I'm going to have three curves to deal with, one after the other. And I wanted to know what the minimum radius these curves could be. And this morning, I've been working that out. I'll show you. I have to retrieve a darker pin. I'll be right back. This is not the ideal pen, it's too big. I was looking for a smaller one. But what I determined is, based on this spacing, the overhang of the inside track is right here. And the uh, throw radius of the outside track is right here. 
So that leaves me approximately half an inch for swaying and all the other misbehaving things that uh, wagons in motion can produce. I haven't laid the third radius in, but that's what I'm going to do next. So I'll do that. You don't need to watch while I fiddle with all this. And uh, I'll be right back. I'm back. So I've got the outside throw of the coach marked. I moved it when I picked up the coach. Okay, let's try this again. Hang on to it that time. Okay, there's my mark. So it's the gap between the inside and the outside overhangs has grown just a little bit as the uh, geometry of the circle increases. That's keeping the exact same spacing. Now, I guess I didn't mention, my plan is to have the minimum curve radius to be the Hornby fourth radius curve. And that's what this is, a Hornby fourth radius. That will be the minimum curve on the layout. I had a couple places over by Shell Hill where I had less than uh, a fourth radius. In fact, I had a second radius curve. And uh, it caused no end of trouble. I always had to slow down around that curve, which I guess, you know, it's that's not a, a terrible thing, you know, that means you have to drive your trains, which, uh, you know, that, that does make it a little bit fun, but you can't leave them on a higher speed and unattended, or they will crash. So I think I have all my geometry worked out now. It was something that was really bothering me. But um, now I know. So this is going to be a little bit bigger than scale. If you were to scale down actual railway clearances, you would find that they're closer together than these. But this is a model railway with model railway curves, which are always or almost always tighter than scale. Pretty ha hard to have a scale curve you know, you'd have to have a hundred foot room to really utilize scale curves. So I've got it worked out. I know what the uh, spacing is. It is uh, 46 millimeters inside rail to inside rail head. 46 millimeters. I had calculated that without laying it out, but I didn't feel confident unless I laid it out full size, which I've done. So that's all I've got today. Bye from Farland.